I began a, a white here in '94, and then done a, a first year pro as well. And then, unfortunately, I was one of many people who then sort of found out he hadn't made the grade that was expected at the time. And uh, I then went away and done. Obviously, played a lot of non-league stuff, and then got back in the football league, which was great. And played, you know, for a couple of decent clubs and that. And then. Um, Obviously, once that that was coming to an end, and uh, I wanted to get back into the physio side of of the game and stay in the game as long as possible, so um, it was great that the opportunity to come back to this club uh, opens up for us, and I'm I'm really enjoying it. The fact that you do go out of the game for the stage, you know, some people that you know that is the final um, sort of input in the game that they have, but for me, it just made me more determined to. To prove that I could get get back and play, and I think um, you realise what what a good job playing is, and and you know training every day if it can be classed as a job because it's something that's that's really enjoyable. It's um, it's something you want to be doing every day, and it's everyone's dream. I mean, no matter what level you're playing, to be actually playing football every day for a living it is is every every kid's dream really, and it's something that that I wanted to follow. Getting released was was quite a um, a good thing for me at, at the early age because it made me realise that the game isn't always going to be be there for you. So I started to put wheels in motion um, early on. I, I went and worked and 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 then I decided that the physio was um, was something I'd like to go along the route of. And I know the PFA were putting courses on for players, which was uh, extremely helpful. And um, I applied for one and, and, and managed to get on it. And then, as I say, that lucky enough, every club I played that the managers were good enough that they used to let me finish training slightly early on a Monday and Thursday to go and fulfil the course. And, you know, that sort of steered me in that direction. And then That's the fine. PFA again helped me when I went on to do the, the Masters as well. They helped fund it, which, you know, is always a, a great help. They funded half the course for me, which which is fantastic and then it does enable you to at least get qualifications that can put you in, in an area of work. I mean, for me, it, being in the round with other football players was great because, you know, straight away you've got a connection with people you were working with there and we were all in it for the same reason, you know, whether it was players coming to an end of a career, players who'd been let go or players who'd been out the game for, for quite a while and found a new new direction they wanted to go in. and. You know, the football mentality of people, everyone helped each other on the course right the way through. And, you know, I still keep in contact with, with a lot of lads who have completed the course with, with up till now. I mean, the difficult side of it was obviously while uh, all the rest of your teammates are on holiday, sunning it up somewhere, you're, you're working six weeks in the hospital at the end of every season. But, you know, sort of you think that the hard work you've put in then is, does pay off in the end. Yeah, it, I mean, it. it it is tough and it, it's tough to, to go home and knuckle down, but having said that, one of the, the best things that was for me was that I was currently playing, I'd got back to be playing full time and, you know, in some aspects, footballers are lucky that they do finish early at a lot of clubs and you can go and put the, the hours in um, into your work and, and stuff then and that does, does go a long way to help. I think um, a lot of people leave it too late till they're actually out the game completely. Um, and then you, you're working full-time hours and then trying to do courses, etc. So for me, I would, I would sort of advise people in the game now to try, you know, now's the time to try and get on courses that are available when you have got maybe a little bit of extra spare time to be, to be putting into other work. Yeah, I think, you know, especially now with, with there being sort of shorter contracts for players, etc. And, you know, the hours that you get free, even after, some days you can only train till, till 12, 1 o'clock. You know, once you're in full-time work and you, you work until 5 and you get home, it's then difficult to be putting a couple of hours into work and, you know, in other areas to be learning new stuff that, that, that sort of you've been getting in college and that. So I think now why you've got that little bit of spare time and it, it is important that people think about the future because, you know, the game is changing and, you know, people are on one-year deals moving on to other clubs, managers are changing quickly. So, you know, not nothing secure for any players at the minute. I loved the game of football. I loved every day that I was in it. Um, the training, the playing. Uh, okay, some, sometimes you wouldn't have told on the pitch, but um, you want to stay in that game. It's a fantastic environment to be in. You know, I, I love being out there now, watching the lads, and you know, just just you, you miss it. So you want to stay around it as much as you can, and you know, you sort of. Um, 
how can I put it? It's the next best thing to play and being in and around it, and that's what I always wanted to be around football. So, you know, as I say, you set out to, to stay in the game, and now once you're in it, you set out like you do when you start as a player. You set out with aspirations to be at the top. I mean, no play, no player starts out by thinking I want to be a, a League One player or a League Two player. We all want to be at the top level, and it's the same now when you start as as a new role in 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 the club. Obviously, I probably put a bit of weight on and a little bit more grey hairs than when I left, but it's fantastic for me, you know, and to come somewhere where a club matters to you, because as I say, it has got, you know, it's got massive um, memories for me and I've got an affection for the club. So the fact that you've got that alongside the, the enjoyment of football, and it's fantastic to be back here. And plus, it's, it's you know, it's uh, with me only being in Liverpool, it's one of the closest clubs apart from Liverpool or Everton that, that I could have asked for to be working at. And it's, it's fantastic. A lot of the same faces are still here. And, you know, that's always nice to come back somewhere where, you know, you, you feel welcome with people. Day to day, it, it's who knows what, what's going to come around. You know, you can come in one day and you've got, you know, 10 players waiting for you in the treatment room or you can come in the likes of, of this week where it's nice and quiet and obviously your days and weeks planning then depends on on what sort of load you've got and unfortunately this club you know we are sort of a, a one-man band in terms of the physio department etc and, and everything else so on that front we do muck in and help other areas you know the, the bigger clubs where you've got more staff etc then they're obviously a little bit different but here you know there is only a set amount of staff and you know, it, it, there is a good togetherness, so we, we, you know, we help each other as much as we can. So, I mean, last night you might have seen me driving a, a minibus and a group of players to, to Burnley away, but you know, I, that's that's what's what's nice about the club, though. We all we all help each other out here. Yeah, I think that's a stigma that's always been put out there about both footballers, and you know, they're not the brightest, etc. But I think that you know, you're talking about maybe you know a small minority with, with you know like every other role and every other job. There's people who are bright and there's people who aren't in whatever role. But certainly, you know, footballers are as educated people as as I've certainly met, and there's no there's no reason why they can't go out there and further themselves. You know, there's a lot of. Um, sort of options for them now in terms of courses and you, you've just got to encourage them to get out there and I think sometimes it needs to be brought to the attention that, that there is sort of opportunities for them to go on and further their education and, and the sooner they do it the, the better really and, and as I say the, the PFA have been great in terms of everything they've they've put on for me I, me personally during my time as as a player and, and you know following sort of um, finishing the game as well they, they've been, been tremendous. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the first and foremost putting the courses on it is a, is a great help and, and you know, it, uh, otherwise there's just no way we would have done it. The funding's another side, you know. Um, it's often stated that, that you know, the hell might be there for certain things, but certainly for me it, it's been there and there's just no way on earth I'd have been able to sort of put myself through um, further education without the help of the PFA. And as I say, I think it's a lot of the time it's people not pushing maybe the PFA to find out what's available um, because if they did then they'd find out that there is a, a wide variety of courses and help that's out there but as I say sometimes you, you've got to go and find that yourself.